Hey there, Internet. Here is a short little bit of advice. So this tweet, it was posted by Mitch on Twitter. And in the comments, there is a so much not getting it. There are people who understand where you're coming from, uh, but there were so many people not getting it. And I discovered it because it got shared to Facebook groups that I'm a part of where people just continue to epically not get it. And I got involved in some rather long form conversations trying to explain and ended up blocking some people because they were just being trolls. But on the whole, there's a whole lot of not getting it. And I felt like I had something to say about this because I've given this advice a lot. I got this advice, in fact. I didn't always listen to it when I was young and starting out, but I got it. And I'm here to tell you 30 years later that I should have listened to it. And I eventually did apply it. So what is this about? First thing, look up the word magnum opus, the, the term, I should say, magnum opus in the dictionary. It doesn't mean your dream project. A lot of people are saying, you can't tell me to pursue my, not pursue my dream project or forget about it. That's not what Mitch is saying. That's not what his advice is about. And magnum opus isn't your dream project. A magnum opus is by definition the, the epitome, the ultimate pinnacle of a creator's work. The first thing you do out of the gates is not going to be that. People have used several artists uh, as examples of, what about Orson Welles? So a cinema guy, in case you don't know. But yeah, a lot of people think very highly of Citizen Kane, which was his first movie. But just be aware, he spent almost a decade in theater and radio first. So he wasn't a novice. He was an experienced storyteller, both visual and auditory and writing and production. And movies were very new then. So just by the fact that he moved the camera around, people were like, oh, oh my God. And they did lots of theatrical stuff, the settings of, of the of a mansion in, in Citizen Kane and the blocking of action and stuff. It was very much uh, inspired by theatrical stage setting. Um, he had experience and he was able to pour it to another media where it shined as innovation because there had been so little done already. One of the reasons I like comics is that it feels like there's a, a great little deal of room to do new things because it's relatively narrow medium in terms of what's been done in experimentation. So that's not who this advice for is. I'm not Orson Welles. You're not Orson Welles. No one getting this advice is Orson Welles. This advice is for novices. It's not for Jeff Bone, who was also brought up, who people said, well, what about him? Bone? It was his long form comic and it was brilliant from the beginning. Well, Jeff owned and operated an animation studio for, again, like about a decade before he ever decided to make Bone. He made Bone because there were lulls between animation projects for a studio and he had time on his hands and he had an idea and he finally decided to do something with it. He had a shit ton of experience in animation. He had also trained in school as an artist. He'd studied cartooning and storytelling. He'd done storyboards. He had tons of applicable skill and he brought that to comics, which he'd understood and read and probably studied for. And I bet you anything he'd even done before, he just hadn't published maybe zines or small little projects, but he hadn't done like a full on thing. Um, even if he never touched an actual comic sequential page before, yeah, absolutely had experience looking at, studying, and thinking about visual storytelling and cartooning and all of the related skills. So that's not someone cold coming cold to comics and making their first project an epic tome. It was someone with a lot of experience choosing a new media to apply that experience. This advice is for the young kid who's barely started drawing, who has huge mind expanding notions, a world building in their head mistaken for storytelling and wants to tell that epic story. And they have no concept of how to build a story and have structure. So it's just a sprawling mess with no snarl boundaries. And so they have no idea of how big it is. So it just feels huge and they know it needs to be 500 pages. This advice is for people who, who've never done a short story and don't understand how to build a story, wanting to just make a sprawling, endless sequence of events and think that's going to be it. This advice is for people who don't know better. If you're uh, the Hernandez brothers, well, before you did Love and Rockets, Jamie Hernandez and his brothers uh, used to read comics with their mother when they were little children, drew comics together as kids. Jamie had already created Hoppy when he was in high school. So by the time he was 21 and they decided to publish Love and Rockets, he had done lots of comics. He wasn't coming to it cold. He also didn't set out to do an epic, sprawling, long-run series about Hoppy and Maggie. 
uh, nor did Gilbert or I forget the other brothers' names, but any of them set out to do long, epic projects. They did a serialized magazine with small chunks of story. And they kept doing it and kept doing it and accumulated over time. But there wasn't some epic plan. In fact, Jamie has talked a number of times about how the fact that he pretty much makes it up as he goes, page by page. Uh, he occasionally has some vague notion of the, a plot, but that's about it. I feel Gilbert does a little more writing, but they're both pretty improvisational from what I recall in interviews. Um, folks have pointed out Dave Sim. Not the best example. First of all, Dave Sim didn't do Cerebus first. Dave Sim had taken interest in and aspired to make comics for several years beforehand, had worked with other people, had written comics, was practicing drawing comics. And then, of course, also, if you haven't seen Cerebus number one, just to be clear, it sucks balls. It's not very good at all. And the Cerebus 300 page epic sprawling monster is very inconsistent. I, it will probably be his magnum opus by strict definition in that it's his greatest work, but it is probably going to be more known for its page count than its quality. Uh, and frankly, he's chosen to dive on, die on hills that have very little to do with his work and more to do with ideology that are really negative and shitty. Um, I think Dave is more cautionary tale about obsession and compulsiveness and a little bit of crazy. Can get a lot of work done, but maybe not always the best for the health of the creator or producing something of long-term merit. I really doubt whether people are going to know about Cerebus uh, 100 years from now, other than it happened to be the first comic that went that many issues, and that might even have been forgotten by then. Who knows? Uh, index somewhere in a historical text. I think that's what you're going to end up with. Um, already, I've been involved in projects that are about, you know, paying uh, attention to people who achieved a lot in comics and a lot of people are like scratching their chins and like well we got to talk about Dave but if we talk about Dave we got to talk about Dave um, so yeah you don't necessarily want to go there what this advice what Mitch is trying to tell you what I've told students many times and what I learned the hard way myself is when you set up to do this epic long thing and you don't even know what you're getting into first. The most likely scenario, it happens over and over and over again. I've seen so many young uh, aspiring people come up to me at conventions showing me their work and like telling me this huge world building project they have in mind. And then I never hear from them again and never see anything produced. I've seen uh, more experienced artists who don't have a lot of writing experience and get in over their head and it ends up being stalled and abandoned part way through. Um, what happens time and time again is when you don't know what you're getting into and you don't know what it's really going to involve or you don't have the skills yet to to deliver the product you have in mind it's better to take some time do small bite-sized project and figure out how the mechanisms work figure out how the page design works or how the story structure works if you can't tell a story in five to, to eight pages you don't understand because the, the, the mechanisms to tell a good plot or, or, or narrative arc in that short space are the exact same ones it takes to do it in a bigger space it's just a question of like more padding and more development and things so if you can't do it in that little story you probably can't do it in a bigger story very well either so you practice that little one you get a, a clear understanding of how that works you try out a few different things because it's a little short story and you can get done in a few weekends you can also go oh that wasn't so onerous and i can see this needs to be fixed and that fixed and it's not a big deal to go back and fix it if you do 30 40 pages and then realize that like most of it needs to get done over that starts feeling like oh shit i got a whole nother couple of months worth of work to just redo backtrack and redo everything i did already i'm not even going forward i'm going backwards that was me uh in my teens because for me in my teens i was the guy who was like oh, big idea must do epic long book i did a comic in high school i had a friend brian skeen did some of the inking i didn't really like the inking but i also had issues with what i was doing and so i got like 30 pages in i think i'd have to go look again i have a stack and a folder somewhere before scrapping it all and drawing it over again. I got uh, about 20 pages into that version and then realized I really don't, this is just X-Men ripped off with a little bit of other kind of noir stuff thrown in. I can do better. So I started another project, another epic. Um, it was uh, inspired by Larry Niven's uh, Integral Trees. I found a writer because I wasn't sure about my writing to work with. I didn't like his writing style, though. We ended up finding a publisher. We'd put out two issues, had a third one in the can when we had a falling out about what to do with the characters, and he just wanted to be, like, crazy violent, and I didn't like that. So I walked away. That didn't get finished. Um, I started another epic long project with a collaborator and another one with a girlfriend. 
the collaborator one, he abandoned it. I got shelved for a while. I actually ended up coming back to that and retooling it later when I was trying to learn how to write, and that became Dream Life. But that went through so many iterations. It's just a writing hobby horse project with no real intention of ever publishing it, just trying things out, um, which is another way you can go. And I, I didn't. it wasn't until I realized in my late 20s, early 30s, that it was just so slow going. What I need to do is set my sights a little lower and do exactly what Mitch is suggesting. Little short stories. Something that I could do a bit of and go, that works, that doesn't work. We'll fix this. Oh, that's good. Great. Done. Next one. Do, 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 do. Oh. That's cool. Don't like that. Next one. In months, I improved more in my writing than I had in years. That's what this advice is for. It's not telling you don't do your dream project. It's saying don't try to make the first thing you do epic. Your job isn't to walk in the room and impress everyone through your studying brilliance. Your job is to enjoy the process, find your calling if this happens to be it, or learn quickly that it isn't. I teach comics, or I have taught comics in the past, and the comic course is designed around doing gag strips and short stories, and I tell people, if you've got a graphic novel idea, that's great, leave it at the door. We're going to do these short little projects, and you're going to get to find out if you really like making comics. And if at the end of it you do, awesome, you can go do your graphic novel now if you want to try that. But a lot of people also say, you know what I really do like is doing gag comics, and they go off and do that. And some people just realize, you know what? I don't like comics so much after all. There's a lot of stuff to do. It, it is. It's a very complicated and labor-intensive medium. There are ways of trying to mitigate that, team up with other people, but it's always a lot of work. And not, not for everybody. And so they find out before they've committed an epic amount of time and resources to something, if it's really for them. Great. That works for them, too. Um, none of you are going to be Orson Welles. You might be Jeff Bone or the Nandy's Brothers but they had time to develop their skills. They had time to figure out what they're doing. And it's not because Orson Welles is, is a brilliant genius. You, will be a, you might be a brilliant genius too, but the odds of you getting in on the ground floor in a new medium that was as young and undeveloped and easy to make an impression in as cinema was when Orson Welles came along to jump into it, it's just not there. Like There's room to grow in comics, but there's also a fuck ton of other people doing it, innovating already. Very likely, anything you do will have been seen and done before. There's a chance you might come up with something new. It's a chance. But it's not like where cinema was when Orson started. Um, and then you would have to be a genius. You would have to be freaking brilliant. And most of us just aren't that. Uh, this isn't an argument to be a jobby, uh, uh, to just sort of be a hack and and go for a media core. Absolutely. Aspire to do your best work every time. But an intentional masterpiece is always going to end up being a pretentious, inconsistent mess. You try to do your best work personally, not better work than the other guy. I always made sure that the thing I'm doing now is better than the last thing I did. I don't measure myself against somebody else. I measure myself against myself. And I excelled really fast. People called me a prodigy at some points. I got into Marvel Comics at 21. I could have kept going if I wanted to, except I hated the editorial culture and I hated what they were asking me to do, so I didn't. But... I got there by iteration and experimentation, and then one of the things that killed me about doing it was being stuck in one little box for so long, and I realized that wasn't for me. So when I went back into comics after a few years of working in animation, I, like I mentioned, I started focusing on my writing and I started focusing on short stories because it's just so much more pleasant a process. So that's what this advice is for, and last thought, it's advice, it's not an order. No one telling you that you should not focus on your magnum opus or some epic project as a first thing. Think small, do small bite-sized projects, and maybe even put aside that epic thing until much later, uh, or forget about it entirely. No one is telling you that as an order. If you really have your hopes set on some sort of dream project, great. Sit, leave that sitting around. Keep thinking about it. But you've got to train up for it you got to develop your skills so that they're up to par to meet the demands of your dream project. You understand? And if you want to ignore this advice, well, it is just advice. It's not a fucking order. Don't get bug up your ass and start yelling at Mitch or me or anybody else. Just stop and think about it for a second. Maybe you bit off more than you could chew. If you listen to us, you'll probably have more fun and learn faster. Now, go enjoy your process of making comics uh, keep it practical. Write short stories. Learn about storytelling. 
have fun drawing it. And if that evolves into something long, awesome. But keep it practical.